Welcome, welcome to this webinar. The webinar about business constellations and the lessons I learned from it. Um, yeah, I'll, last time I gave this work, this workshop, this this webinar also before summer in July, and there was so much to tell and there were so many things to do. So um, I've shortened it a little bit, um, but well, I'm always excited about it and always want to tell more and more and. If you have questions, feel free. I will look on my right, your left, or whatever um, to see if there's anything in the chat. And um, feel free to ask questions about whatever you want. And I'll see if I can answer that. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. My name is uh, Martijn Meijma. I'm from the Netherlands, uh, beautiful city of Deventer. I actually have a picture of it. Yeah, that's where I'm from. This is the Eisel River. And well, where am I from? I'm also, um, yeah, I have Dutch parents. Um, there's a lot of um, teachers in my family. There's a lot of uh, church related people, uh, people with their own views on how to educate people. So that's also flowing through me. And there's a lot of civil servants, people that are working for the government. Um, I've done my studies in Groningen, which is in the north of Holland. I studied management and organization, so that's also where, I'm, where I come from. I've worked for IBM in the IT. I've worked for a consultancy firm and, well, almost 11 years, the 1st of September, it's 11 years ago that I started my own company. So that's where I'm from. And... Um, my speciality is always combining business and um, organizational and management insights with intuitive insight, more, well, say spiritual insights and, and make them practical for using them in businesses and, and to make your business better. So um, my mission is to align businesses with the needs of people and the planet. Uh, and making profit as a result. So not profit as the main focus, but profit as a result, because that's what I see. If you use your intuition and you're attuned to, to well, a larger force, we'll talk about that later, then there will be beautiful products, beautiful services. People will benefit from it. The planet will benefit from it and you will make profits as a result. So that's why I like so as many people as poss possible to use intuition and intuitive methods like business constellations. And that's why I'm giving these webinars. Um, and, and one thing is that I like working from a consciousness of unity and wholeness instead of me and you and competition and it's me against you. Or, no, I like we're all one and, and how can we create a better world or a beautiful world? So that's my mission. So now I would like to know a little bit more about you. Um, and I have this question. Well, maybe first you can put in the chat, where are you from? What city, what country are you from? Uh, so that we can see you know, the diversity of people that are joining this webinar. And at the same time, I will ask you a question about how familiar you are with business constellations so that I know, well, what kind of audience we have. So that's at the bottom of the screen, you can click on how familiar, well, this is my first encounter, I've heard about it, I've experienced one, I've experienced more than one, or I'm very familiar. So please, in the chat, where are you from? Bucharest, yay, Bucharest. And I've seen some people from Holland. So put in the chat, please, where are you from? Beaujolais. Beautiful wines in France, Marion. Holton, yes, that's just a little bit farther east from me. Great. Lochem, which is also a little bit more to the east of me. Antwerp, Belgium, yes. Interesting to see this mix. Last time I were a lot of people from Eastern Europe. For some reason, I'm attracted to Eastern Europe. It's very interesting how, how that works. Brabant, which is a part of Holland, Netherlands. 
Well, if you want to know more about Holland and the Netherlands, Google it on YouTube, and there's this very interesting video about it. So and how familiar are you with business constellations? Well, 17% says it's my first encounter. 17% says I've experienced one. 50% has experienced more than one. And also 17% is very familiar. So that's very interesting. We have a broad audience with people not knowing anything about it, not experienced, and people very experienced. So bear with me if I'm going too slow or also if I'm going too fast, please ask a question in the, in the chat. But I'll, um, yeah, it's not very difficult to follow, I think, for people that have never experienced the constellation because that's also why this webinar, why I give these webinars. So it's good to get to know you and see that you're from all over Europe. And um, I will talk a little bit now about the background of, of constellations and of what we call systemic work, because constellations are actually a tool that is used, or a tool, I shouldn't say a tool, but it, it makes it a little bit uh, compact if you call it a tool, it's much more than that. But it's a tool used in, in working systemically. And working systemically means that you're looking at businesses or at people, not as individuals or as, as from the parts, but you're looking at the whole system. And doing that, you will gain so much insight that will, will help you solve problems that keep repeating itself and that keep bothering you in your life or in your, uh, in your business. So the systemic approach. Well, no, not everything starts with me, but it starts with me in this case. When you're born, you are born actually right in, 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 a, in a system. It's a system of your family. And a system being, well, a, a group of parts forming something together. And in this case, it's your mom, your dad, it's you. Maybe you have a, a brother or sister um, or brother or sisters. And you're born in this family. But at the same time, you're born into a country. So you're part of a country system. You're born maybe in a religion, religious system. Maybe you're born in a part of the country with its dialects and its special habits. Maybe you're born in, well, as soon as you're born, you're already a member of many, many systems. Um, and your family system is larger than just your mom and dad. It's also their parents, your grandparents, and then your great-grandparents. I'm just reading a book about my great-grandfather from my father's side, which is very um, interesting to do because it really connects me with that side of the family. And from a systemic point of view, this goes back seven generations. Seven generations are influencing you the moment you're born. So, um, it's interesting because it's not only you, but it's also all the other people you're working with. They have this, this at least this family background, they might have a religious background and a, a country background. So whenever you look at somebody and work with somebody, you have a, a connection with all these people and all these, um, these systems. And then I'm going to school. And there are all these kids at school, and I'm becoming part of the school system. And not only I'm, am I becoming part of the school system, but maybe the school has a certain method they use. So I'm also connected to that method. I'm connected to all these people with all these family system, country system, religious system. So you can understand that things happening at school might not always go, are not always about me and the other person, but it's almost also are systems that might influence each other. Well, and then when you start working, it's actually the same. There's this company and the company is connected. Well, we'll see later that it's connected with everything. So there are so many systems active, like the company has a history. Things have happened in the company, especially with old companies, like companies that were founded beginning of the last century. There has been a war in Europe. And what have they done in the war? How, how did they uh, deal with, um, yeah, with the different parties in the war, the different sides? Um, there might be fires, there might be death, and there might be fraud. 
um, all things that, that have happened in, in, the, in the history of a, of a company. And we don't have to know about it, but it's all influencing the current work situation. So it might be the case that I have an issue with my boss or with my colleague that is influenced by something that has happened 10 years ago. And we both don't know about it, but the, the system is still uh, holding this information and it's still vibrating in, in, in the organization. And then, well, it gets even more complex if you have a department. Oh, actually, then there are different departments and there are different subsystems. And then when you add the client, it becomes even more interesting because the client also has different different person, people, different departments, has a history. Um, and by uh, serving certain clients, you're also connecting to this larger field of this client. So for example, if you're working with um, the military industry, you're connected to war just by, just, well, even if you're giving a training to a military organization, you're connected to the system of the war. Um, if you, that's what I encountered once in a constellation, there was this pretty technical guys, engineers, and they were creating machines that were used in the candy industry. And this way they were connected to the candy industry and with the candy industry, they were connected to obesitas, obese, and they were connected to children and fun of children and happiness, but also to the bedside, the sugar addic addiction in the, in the world. So as you can already see, um, by just being a person in an organization serving clients, you're connected to so many systems and so many systems are influencing this. Um, but most of it is done subconsciously. So there is no sign saying, oh, this is a, this has happened 10 years ago and now it's influencing this. No, this is all happening without you knowing it or um, actively influencing it. So then there's also the product and the service and there's money flowing and it's the effect of the product on the world. So there's a lot, a lot of um, influences in our interaction, our daily life in the work environment. And I'll, and business constellations and looking from it systemically is not tuning in and focusing on, on one part. What it is doing is it, it is zooming out and looking at the whole. And it's looking at all these influences. Um, but it's very difficult to do that mentally and with our, our rational mind. And that's why um, they, or they, we use constellations. Constellations are a way, and I'll explain a little bit more about it, are a way of making this in, these influences tangible and visible. And also finding out, so where is the, the, the real tension in this issue? And what is the real solution for this issue? Instead of us, um, yeah, just fixing here and fixing there and then something pops up here again and we need to do it again and then we need to do a training again and we need to coach people again. Um, well, that's not going to work. If there are any questions, just let me know. Otherwise, I'll explain a little bit more about how a constellation works. And if you have experienced one, then you know that. So basically, with a constellation, and there are various forms and formats of constellations, but the, the most basic format is that there is somebody who has a question, like a manager or a business owner, and the facilitator does an interview. And the interview is not about coaching or consulting. And um, in the training, if you want to facilitate constellations, you have to unlearn asking coach questions or asking uh, consultancy questions. It is about learning the facts, the facts about the business, the facts about history, the facts about money and ownership, the facts about structure, hierarchy, um, and the facts about what is the real, what is the question they want to have answered. Um, and then together with the client, you choose the elements. What elements are relevant in this for this question. Um, 
and then what you do is you you choose representatives for each element and you can elements could be like the company the client the service or product uh, the marketing approach but it could also be the company 10 years ago or the war or um, somebody in the company who committed a fraud or so it could be all kinds of elements it could be persons it could be functions um, it all started with family constellations back in the 1980s and there were it was quite simple what element elements to use it was father mother brother sister and family constellations are really a more therapeutical form of constellations it's very powerful also and, and, and slowly they, it has developed into more um, or it has not developed it has broadened to also including uh, business questions and then there are so many more elements that you can use so that's part of the yeah the, the, the craft actually is to find the elements that will really help the clients find the real answers and then people are asked to represent these elements and you can see them here in the picture these people are representing elements in i think this was braga um, it was more like a, uh, a societal question so they were representing things like the church and um, the past of the city the, 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 the citizens of the city and well whenever you take a place as a representative you will you will sense things you and we'll we'll see that later on in the exercise you will sense oh i want to be close to that person oh who i feel really small or oh i want to sit down or wow this is so um um yes so so much tension or so much air or there are all kinds of sensations and what we do and that's actually what we do with the client and the, and, and the facilitator we just observe what's what is being shown here what does the system show us and then we follow the flow of the field um, and that's different than constellations like 10 years ago or 20 years ago it was more like the facilitator changing things moving people and now we're more uh, focusing on okay so what what is the flow of the, of the um, of the constellation and it will show us a lot of information sometimes this is already enough for the client to know what to do but we can also do systemic interventions and systemic interventions are uh, adding another element moving an element having elements say certain things to each other um, well actually that's basically what it is those three interventions and then at the end we finish up we dismiss the people from their role as a representative and um yeah and depends on the setting we're doing it in sometimes there's time to an analyze or to reflect on what has happened but mostly with constellations i let them do their their own work because uh, after a constellation you will feel a lot of, of things have resonate resonate inside of you and sometimes it takes time to um filter out the right information and filter out what is the answers to the question. So this is basically what constellations, how they work and how they technically work or what is really uh, the secret behind constellations, I don't know. They've done a lot of research. They've done a lot of research to uh, on constellations and they found they work. So they've done, um, they've measured okay so what is the organization now we do a constellation and what does does it change anything and yes it changes for the good but they haven't figured out what what the the, the, the technicalities are that cause this to work well i can tell you about quantum mechanics or chaos theory or uh, entanglement or well or a larger field or consciousness or it's in that area but it's difficult to grab so that's why for me i'm a practical person i say if it works then i don't know want to know why and, and how i just use it because for me constellations have helped me to grow my business very fast it has helped me to uh, develop myself very much and to um yet to release things that are were bothering me 
um, in a way that I don't have to go to a psychiatrist every every week for two years. Um, there's no need for any consultant to work with me for four months and to do all kinds of research. It goes much and much faster than that. And that's what I like about it because I'm also a little bit lazy and it's uh, it's an easy way of, um, of, of creating uh, change and creating prosperity in your organization. So where can we apply constellations? There are many areas. Like I said, the family constellations were the first. That was, uh, yeah, Bert Hellinger in Germany found out from all kinds of other methods. He created this method and it really brought a lot of insights and, and, and healing in it for his clients. And later on, and Gunther Weber has done a lot of work on that. They have um, broadened the, the scope to organizations. Well, and then you can think of career constellations, but now nowadays people are looking at illness, diseases, where do they come from? Are they related to some kind of systemic influence like with your ancestors, other than DNA and, and um, inheritance? But they found out, for example, that um, if your ancestors had a big war or something, it is also in their DNA, this, this, this um, anxiety, uh, and, and stress. So there is much more pass it, passed on from generation to generation than we now think. You can have constellations about relationships, about teams. You can do a constellation for a team that the team, um, everybody represents him or herself. And you just say, okay, choose a place in the room where you feel comfortable. And it shows immediately the issues in the team. So it's a very powerful tool to um, reveal what is what is there. You can do marketing constellations, um, strategy constellations. So, and, and the list can, can be endless. There are so many areas in which you can apply. And that's also what I like. And that's also what I teach you in the training is to find your area and your way of using constellations because it is not a certified, um, um, area. You don't have to get a certification to do constellations. Bert Hellinger has said, no, everybody can use it. It's not mine. Um, and so there are many, many people using it all over the world, world and they're using it for many different reasons and in many different ways. So that's the good thing I, I like about it. And then there are different types of constellations. You can do a constellation in a group, like in a workshop, and you have people, and there's a question owner, and you do, like I said, there's somebody with, and then they, the, the workshop uh, attendees, the, the, they are the representatives. But if you work one-on-one, -on -one, you can work with tabletops. You see that on the picture. There are these rocks or these gems on the table, and you can use them as a, as a representative, or we have these little figures, or even with pieces of paper or whatever, you can use everything. You can use it on the floor. You can use floor marks. That's what we're gonna do in a, in, a, in a moment. You can even use it in your visualization. I did it today with a client. Okay, visualize your, your company. Where does it stand? If it's a person or what does it look like? And visualize your, your client and how do they relate to each other? You can do it in drawing. People can draw a constellation and then with a new drawing, they can change things. So it's also very, yeah, that's what I like. It's very creative, um, creative craft, actually. You can, you can use it the way you want it. And then there are different ways of facilitating. And I really mean different and not better or worse. Um, there's this very directive way of, of, of constellating by saying, okay, so now you need to stand on the left and you need to bow and you need to say this and you need to do this. Um, there's also a way of, okay, so if we have this issue, we need to put the person to the left and we need to say this, so there's like fixed interventions. There's also people that do a constellation in complete silence. It's very interesting. I've, I've done it actually, yeah, it was even, I've done it in silence, but I've, this was one, there was not even a question and, and I, was put in the middle and he said, and I was looking at him. He said, no, 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 I'm not, I'm, a, I'm not, a, I'm not a facilitator. I'm just holding the space and everything that needs to happen will happen. So that was 
for me even was a complete shock what it was and it was really doing something inside of me it was oh it was amazing there are also fixed formats that's also what we will look at in the in the in the training because certain formats you can use right away they're quite quite easy to use in your in your work and and yeah that's the approach i like a lot is the intuitive approach where you uh, really tune into the energy or into the field and you yeah sense or know what it what needs to be done so i'm not a very theoretical person there's a lot of good books about it which which i really recommend that you read but in the training i always like to people to to find an intuitive way to to facilitate and it could be in silence and sometimes do it do a cons do a, an, an intervent intervention and sometimes be very directive and say okay now i want you to say this because that really works sometimes so and there are probably even more uh, ways of facilitating any questions let me know i don't see any Okay. Then the lessons, because working with all these constellations, um, it's interesting. You see these, uh, yeah, these these patterns, and you see these lessons that you can learn from them. Because I've seen so many constellations, and every time, oh, okay, so this is how it works. And still, sometimes it works a little differently. But there are five lessons that I have. Um, yeah that that i have found that that i would like to share with you so lesson one there are three yeah, leading forces there are different ways to name this but there are three um, principles that i think you should be aware of if you look at businesses or systems and one is there is a good place for everything if something or somebody somebody is a um, part of the system then it it is always a part of the system and there's you cannot make it not a part so sometimes for example if you have a company and somebody has committed fraud then you don't want you're you're going to fire that, that that person but the person will always remain part of the history of the company and if you make it like a black page and you don't want to talk about this person anymore then the, the the larger consciousness of the system will make sure that this person is be is remembered and that is happening by some symptoms in the system like somebody who cannot do his job very well or by some function that that's that is not um how do i say that is, that is that that nobody can can take that function because it's never working so when you have a repeating problem, you could look at look at is, has every, everything and everybody a place in this organization. And the same, this was the, the case with my client this morning. She found out like a part of her. We are we are have all different parts of ourselves. She didn't want that part. She wanted the part to go away, like some anger or fear. And of course, we don't like fear, but fear is part of us. So it it has a place, and we need to include it. And one of the forces is that systems want to be whole. They want to include everything that is part of the system. And yeah, in order to do that, they will, um, this larger consciousness, wow, will even higher between, uh, well, yeah, higher in the metaphorically way, um, people. So you, yeah. It's difficult to explain, but it's that some people will, will will take certain roles or do certain things that they're not consciously aware of, but they're doing it to make something visible in the system. So that's why I sometimes say that a problem in an organization is often a, a solution of the system to make sure that everybody is included. And if you look at problems like that, like, okay, so what could this be a solution for? What does the system want to show us? You get a different view of, um, of, the, of the problem. And another leading force or, or principle is exchange. Giving and taking, a system is always giving and taking with its environment. That's, that's how it stays alive. 
and it's giving more and then it's taking more and it's giving more it's it's a movement but overall this should be in balance this should be balanced because if there's a disbalance then um yeah then you will have symptoms again and we, we call them problems and if we look at the problems um isolatedly then we think oh this person is doing bad or this is going wrong but um it, it is the system that is saying there's something disbalanced in the exchange. A good example that my, one of my teachers, Jan Jakob Stam, he said he was working for the gold bank in South Africa and there was gold being stolen. And of course, this you cannot steal. That's very bad. So they were trying to find who's, who has done this and we need, to, we need to punish him. And then he did a constellation. And... He put, and that's, that's, yeah, he's a very good guy. So he said, let's put a representative for the real theft. So not for this step, but what is this theft representing? And then everybody felt it. It's that there has been a lot stolen from the African people. And I get goosebumps right away. So, and that's, that's in the larger system, there was a big, huge disbalance in, in giving and taking. We have taken a lot. From this this land and from these these people and this was one way of giving a little bit back but we call it theft and we think we need to punish these people but actually what we need to do is to acknowledge that we have taken actually too much already so um and you can see that we look at it like this but the, the problem sometimes is is much bigger um or has a much much bigger uh cause and then the last leading force is order. Um, there is always a natural order in a system. And like in a family, it's very clear there. You have the generations. So yeah, you have the, the, the children, the parents, the grandparents, and you have age. So you have older children, younger children. And if you don't acknowledge this order, like if I say, okay, so I don't think that my father is capable of taking care of me. I'm I'm better than my father and I um, I think I, I know better what to do and I can teach him then I'm taking the place of his father so I'm not in my my generation I'm actually breaking the order and that will cause a lot of problems in in in, in the system and in my life um, so and, and the same works in, in organizations, but, but there are many orders. And that's the, the difficult thing in organizations is that there are so many because you have the order of hierarchy, you have the order of seniority. How long have people been working for the company? How much experience do people have? Um, age. And it's always good to find out what order is leading here. And I can tell you hierarchy is, well, the least order that is affecting the company. So hierarchy is not not the real order that things are organized around. Um, but mostly it's age, it's uh, seniority or or other orders. So it's always good if you have a problem in an organization to see, do we respect the, the order and which order is um, is leading here? So that's one lesson one is that these three forces or principles um, can help you to look at, at organizational problems in a different way. Again, if you have questions, let me know. So then we have lesson two. And lesson two, I call repeating patterns. And you see the background, which are fractals. It's repeating and repeating and repeating. And that's actually how, how all of life is set up. And it's the interesting thing if you can look at companies and problems in companies from this perspective. And you can start wherever you want. You can start like, okay, what kind of service is this company providing for the world? What is it solving? Like a train company is, is working on mobility and, and is working on moving people from A to B. So then moving or uh, transporting is a pattern. It's, it's transporting, which is a good pattern, but it could be that in the, inside the company, moving around or moving to different functions or mobility is a problem. It might 
It might be that there's a lot of stuckness in the organization. Uh, it might also be that between the company and its clients, there's a lot of stuckness or there's just, or there's too much mobility. Um, it could also be that within the company, with between the, the, the departments or between the, and the people, there's an issue with mobility or with stuckness. And there's even the possibility that within the families of the people working there, there is an issue with mobility or stuckness or something with movement because people tend to be attracted to companies that have the same patterns as their families. And companies tend to hire people that for some reason they sense, oh, we, 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 we recognize this pattern here, so please come join us. So for example, the police, you can say they are in the world to provide safety. So I think that safety and unsafety is an issue in within the organization of the police and within the company, the, 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 the uh, families of the people. And well, sometimes you have to search a little bit. So you have to zoom out a little bit. Okay, so what is the real pattern here? But all of, I, this has helped me a lot to uh, figure out uh, what the real problem could be. Because for example, I've worked for an innovation company and we helped, com well, helped small and medium enterprise to innovate. Um, but <laughs> within our organization, it was very difficult to change anything, to, to try out new things. So, um, and, you, and you can already understand that if you're working with people from that company, like myself, change is an issue. Change is an issue in my life. I like change and at the same time, I hate it. Um, I, I want things to stay the same. So it already helps you to, to know what to look for because you, you know that there are repeating patterns in the organization and between the organization and its clients. So that's one of the lessons that I learned. Lesson three, every company has been founded for a reason. And it is, uh, this reason is like, it's actually like DNA that you put into an organization without you knowing it. There is this initial purpose and the French have a beautiful word for it, the raison d'être, the reason of being. Um, and as soon as you move away from this initial purpose with your company and you start doing all kinds of things that are not related to it, you get yourself into trouble. Um, unless you really say, okay, we have, we have reached our goal, we have reached our purpose, and we're starting a new purpose now. But that's not what companies do. It's just like, oh, we want to make more money, let's move here. Oh, we want to do this, let's, let's, go, let's go there. Um, and every time you do that, things start, fl start not flowing anymore. It, it, you, you get stuck and difficult. It is going to be hard work, a lot of people getting sick. So um, it's good to realize what is the initial purpose? Why was this company founded? And if you have a, are self-employed is why did I find my company? What is, what is the raison d'être of my company? So that's a very important um, principle or element to, to realize. I use it quite often also in constellations, the initial purpose just as an element to, to see if, if the company is still related to this element. And this is also an interesting lesson. Um, when I was in, in, in university, it was in the 80s, 90s, um, I, I, had, I read the book by Gareth Morgan, Images of Organization. And what he said is that there are different ways to look at organizations. And one of the ways we use a lot is organizations as a machine. That's how everything is organized these days. We have like a dashboard where we can turn on knobs and then everything changes. And we have these um, little meters that say how well we are doing. But the organization is not a machine. An organization, an interesting thing is Gerrit Morgan, this was one of the images, is organization as an organism. There is, if as soon as you start a company, there is this larger consciousness, this greater consciousness at work. And, um, you cannot manage an organization like you cannot manage a cat or you cannot manage um, 
a dragon or you cannot manage a large organism it is more like tuning into the energy of the organism and finding out where does it want to take us and where is it going so it is not about uh trying to control and and and, and manage an uh, organization it's more of letting go of resistance and tuning into the larger flow and 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 consciousness of the organization and this is also what i was telling you about with the three forces is this larger consciousness also takes care of wanting to be whole so it will it will do something to heal the gaps of existence like if, if there's a gap in existence like some something in the past is not acknowledged or somebody is not acknowledged to to be part of the system this this larger consciousness will will make sure that this is known to the to the to the parts of the system so there will be symptoms or problems as we could say um arise from this gap and then there's the same with exchange if there is, somebody has taken too much or the system has taken too much from its environment there will be uh, problems there will be patterns and dynamics that show us that there's something wrong with this um this giving and taking so if you look at an organization as an organism you get a much better idea of what to do to let the organization flourish or what to do like change management is very interesting change management if you have an organ if you have an organism it's continuously changing it is continuously renewing my my, my body is completely different than seven years ago um, because everything is renewing so if i'm gonna change manage my body i'm gonna say okay so neil now it's time for you to grow it's not gonna work i mean then it costs, takes me a lot of time and i'm not able to do this so by trying to control and manage everything we keep our organizations too small and too and the impact too little because we can do so many more things if we let go of this control mechanism, control need for control so that's an important lesson I've learned. And then the last one, there's no good nor bad, which is sometimes a difficult one. Um, but by facilitating constellations, all kinds of constellations, I have learned to acknowledge what is and not wanting to change it, not wanting to judge it, not wanting to place it in this is good or bad, this is uh, something to keep or to get get rid of um, it has learned me to be curious to be explorative to experiment uh, to connect with the deeper layers because there's always something behind the surface so at the surface we see two people fighting or we see this high turnover rate or we see these clients that are running away and it's always interesting to see what is what is underneath it. Why is this happening? What is the reason of the system, the larger system, why this is happening? So if you if you let go of this judgment, you're much more open to letting go of your ego and to much more open to, um, yeah, maybe the reality, what is really happening. And I was I've been thinking that. Um, I will give a next webinar about because this is what I learned as a facilitator. It, that's also why I like so much to do these constellations because it also helps me grow as a person. And what I would like to do is share with you the things I learned as a facilitator. Like this is one of the lessons I think, but it's it's about what do you need as a facilitator um, of constellations and, and and how can it help you in your daily life? So I will do an, another webinar, but. I'll tell you, I'll send you an email about that. So this is the, the, the lesson number five. And again, time is flying, time is flying. So I want to do an exercise with you. Are you ready for the exercise? Um, you need your pieces of paper. So get three pieces of paper. And a pencil or a pen. So what we're going to do, we're going to work with three representatives of three elements. And we're, this, we're doing this not 
based on a question. Otherwise, we have all these questions from other people. So we do this just a general exploration to find out how do you relate to these elements. So one of the elements is you. So on one piece of paper, you, you write your own name or I or me or whatever it is in your language. And then there's a piece of paper and you write client. And you don't have to write specific clients, it's just clients of your company. Assuming that you're working for a company or have your own company and that you have clients. It could be internal clients. And it's interesting, I think, to explore how do you and clients relate to systemic work and constellations. So on the third piece of paper, you write constellations or systemic work. So then you have something like three oops three pieces of paper and you put them in the in the room so start with me or i or yourself and place yourself in the room and some people say oh you know you shouldn't think it's sensing and feeling no no it's okay if you think you need to be in a corner you put yourself in the corner that's okay and as you can see i have put these little arrows on them to, to show which way they are looking. Because when you work with floor markers, always realize that you're it's like having people standing there. So they're facing a, a certain direction. Just put, so put yourself in the room, the piece of paper facing a certain direction that you think or feel or sense that is the right direction. And then do the same for your client. So play, play, or clients, maybe clients in general. So place your clients, a one, one, one piece of paper representing your clients. Place them somewhere in your room. And you do the same for business constellations. So you place these three elements. And in the training, if you do the training, you will learn that there are different ways of placing elements and there are different ways of choosing elements. But for now, you just write three pieces of paper and you put them intuitively or rationally in the room. And then because you don't have people that you can use as a representative, you have to do it yourself. So what you do, you step on your own piece of paper with your name and, that's, and you face the direction it is facing. And there you start representing. So you're sensing what is happening here. What do I sense here? And first focus on yourself. Are you feeling comfortable here? What does your body tell you? Are there any emotions that you sense? Do you sense something mentally? Are you thinking of something? Are there thoughts that pop up maybe? And you can also sense intuitively or energetically. Do you sense other things? Could be, could not be, just observe that what is. So you don't have to change anything. It's not that you are doing it is right or wrong. It's just observing. And then how do you relate to the other elements? So you can imagine that there's a person standing on the business constellation piece of paper, a person standing on the client piece of paper. And how do you relate to this person, this element, this representative? Do you feel attracted? Do you want to be farther away? Does it do something to your breathing? Are you excited or are you sad or whatever? Just sense what is what is how are you relating to this element and to the other element and what is the quality of the relationship and again this is just an exploration so just notice what you notice and you don't have to change anything we're not gonna do all kinds of intervention to make this different it's just exploring And then you might feel that you want to make a movement, that you want to move towards another spot. So make that movement. Place that, um, 
um, move the piece of paper to the spot that you think, oh, this is better, this feels more comfortable. But not the other two, but only the, 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 the one representing you, where you stand on. And I'm trying to do this in a, <laughs> in a normal pace, but at the same time, I know some people are fast, some people are slow. So you can do this later on after the webinar and you can explore this some more. But for now, I would like you to step off the piece of paper with your name on it, uh, turn around a little bit to shake off the energy, and then step on the piece of paper with clients on it. And this way you can explore how do clients feel and what are they experiencing and how do they relate to me, to myself and to business constellations. So it gives you a client perspective on yeah, you and business constellations. And also here you can maybe sense that they want to move, but they maybe they want to. So just follow the movement if there is a movement. And only the, you can, if they say, yeah, I want me to be farther away or business constellations to be closer, um, just, just register it, but don't move the other pieces of paper. Only move the piece of paper that you're standing on. So if the client wants to move, then move the client. And again, you can sense what is the relationship with business constellation with, with yourself? What is the quality of this relationship? What kind of sensations does the client sense emotionally, physically, mentally, energetically? And then you step off this piece of paper and you shake and turn a little bit to be sure that you're not representing the client anymore. And you step on the piece of paper of business constellations. And here you do the same. First, you just sense how is business constellation standing here? What does it experience? And you don't have to think about it because it's very difficult to think what does business constellation want. Just act as you are now business constellation. So what are you experiencing here? How do you relate to the other two? And do you want to move? Do you feel comfortable? And if you want to move, move this piece of paper, but only this piece of paper, not the other two. And again, what is the relationship with the other two? What is the quality of this relationship? Is there anything you want to say maybe to the other two? So there are many things that you can explore here. And then I would like you to step off this piece of paper and shake it off a little bit, turn and finally, end on your own piece of paper again. Step on your own piece of paper, representing yourself, and sense what all these movements and all this information that you have just received, what is it doing with you? How are you reacting? How is this resonating inside of you? And keep breathing. Breathing is always very important. Because sometimes when things get ten tense and we tend to not breathe anymore. So keep on breathing. And maybe you want to move yourself after all these movements of the others. And if you want to explore this more, you can just continue stepping on off and stepping on. And when you step on a piece of paper, move it again. But for now, I would like you to finish on your own piece of paper and register, sense what all this information, 
how it is resonating inside of you emotionally, physically, mentally. And then you can step off your own piece of paper and maybe you want to share something in the chat about what you have experienced. Maybe you have a question about it. So for some people, this was your first constellation and it's a real constellation. Um, and I'm curious what it has brought you, what kind of insights you have got, gotten or, well, what did you think of this kind of constellation? And when I work as a consultant or as a coach, I do this with my clients. I say, okay, take pieces of paper. I have these little four mats and put them in the room and step on them. And sometimes I step on them and then I, they can really sense this interaction. But it's a very powerful way, I think, of making things tangible and visible, uh, what otherwise would be subconscious. So if there is anything you want to share, please share it in the chat. And if you don't want to share, it's okay. So sometimes people really want to share and other times they don't. Monica says, I have the sensation that I better understand the needs of my clients. Okay, yeah. That's, that really helps to feel a sense, what do my clients need? To give you a little hint, you, what you could also do is this, use this as a marketing constellation. What, how, how can I promote myself to the clients. Monica says their urgency and need for me to get more inside the companies. Okay, so very good, yeah. So it, it's not always a very big insight and very life-changing. It's sometimes very practical information. But what I like and what I've seen with my clients that, that by doing this, it's more embodied learning instead of, oh, I, I know that I have to do this. No. I know from my toes all the way up to my head that I need to do this. So it's a different way of knowing. Okay, thank you, Monica, for sharing this. Um, well, I would like to tell you a little bit more about the training I'm giving, because what I like to do is that more people know how to use this method. And like I said, it's not a certified method and well, I think there cannot be enough people using this method in their own way. Some people will give big workshops. I sometimes do it with 100 people and others will only use it in one-on-one -on -one settings. And for me, I like to uh, spread the word and to teach people how to use this craft. So what I do, I have this training and I had it in Holland for a long time. And now I've done this training many times or sometimes already in France. And this fall, I'm gonna do it in Bucharest, thanks to Oana and Christina who really wanted to do me to do that. And I'm going to do it in Budapest, which is yeah a wonderful opportunity. Um, and the goal of this training is for you to use business constellations in your day-to-day -day business. So it is not about um, learning the theory or learning uh, the, the, grand, the concept. It's really a practical training where you're going to learn how to do this. Um, so it is doing the interview, setting up a constellations, do the interventions and round it up. So it's the whole process from beginning to end. Um, it is also about developing a radar for systemic forces. So it is learning to look at questions from a different perspective, asking different questions and learning which elements um, you can use and which effect it will have. You, can, you will learn how to do it in groups as well as in one-on-one -on -one settings. So it will be uh, whatever, yeah, for both people that work in, in both settings or, or some people say, I only wanna learn one-on-one -on -one, and that's that's perfectly okay. Um, you will get some practical forms and formats of constellations that you can use right away. Um, and, you, and you will practice a lot. Like you see here in the picture, people are, are practicing. Um, and I will learn, teach, I will teach you the intuitive approach. So intuition and intuition development will also be part of the training. We will do some exercises to, yeah, to, to awaken our intuition. Um, and what I always like, and 
it depends on the people in the country, but I always like to have a real client. So one of the five days, we will have a real client from a real company that has a question and we will work, work with it instead of with our own um, group. Because after four days, you have learned a lot from, yeah, you already know how to work with, with the other people in the group. And then it's interesting to have work with a real client. And I'm also flexible. So if you say I want to more, I want to use it in a whatever environment within the IT environment or more in the um, healthcare, or I want to do it in large groups with um, municipalities, or I want to do it with, I, well, just ask me and I can see if I can fit it in, in the training. And what I've seen is that the group is always, uh, it's interesting to see that the, the group is always perfect, that people want to learn the same thing and they really help each other to, to grow and to learn. So that is what it is about. And I get a lot of questions about it. Can everyone learn it, for example? And I think, yes, of course, you have to have some kind of openness. And I think it's important that you have done some personal work because it is only five days. And well, some trainings are like 10 days or 30 days, but there's a lot of personal development also in the, in the training. And, in the, and for me, um, there is some personal development, of course, but I already uh, assume that you have done some of your personal work. Um, but everybody can learn it. Yes, I have even had people that say, oh, I'm not so intuitive and I cannot sense this and it looks very difficult from a distance, but everybody can learn it. That's for sure. Um, do you need to be certified? Well, like I said, no, there's no certification. It's a free free method that you can use and you can use it wherever you want however you want it um, and for me and that's also part of the, the training i would yeah help you to tune into your intuition and that way you can see what questions do you want to work with and what which ones you don't or when do you want to use a constellation when do you don't you want to use a constellation so will you be able to facilitate it all by yourself after the training? Um, yes, and sometimes no. It depends on, on the person. For me, I had two days of training and I started doing consultation with friends and just with cl uh, clients. And I've seen that with my um, trainees as well. And other people still feel not comfortable, but they have learned a lot during the training, but they say, oh no, next time can you help me with it? So sometimes I, I, I supervise them. Um, but basically, you can already use constellations and only the, the impact of the constellations or the, uh, the depth of the constellations that changes depending on where you are and which is completely OK. Well, it's a training in business constellations, but the question is, do we only do business constellations? No, we will also do some other kinds of constellations, also depending on the, the, the needs and wishes of the, of the other participants. But of course, there will also be personal constellations because if you want to develop yourself as a as a uh, as a trainer, yeah, you have to look at yourself also and, and at your um, well systemic patterns and how to uh, go beyond them. Where and when? Oh, I'm so excited to go to Bucharest. Romania from October the 15th to the 19th. And you, you'll find more on my own website, but also on the website with businessconstellations.org. And in November, I will be in Budapest. And I'm also excited about that. And well, we already have in Budapest, it, it, yeah, for both trainings, we already have people signing up. So um, yeah, there are, for every, the group is about 12 people, 12 maximum because I like to work in small groups, not 20 or 25. So um, if you're interested, make sure that to let us know that we can reserve a seat for you. Um, but for me, it's not like, okay, you need to decide now and you get a discount because I don't like that kind of, uh, of, of actions. But, but if you're interested, let us know. And then if you have questions, let me know. And then I'm also willing to do a Skype call to find out if this is really what something for you right now. And I'm also doing it in the Netherlands. I will sometimes forget it with my English uh, webinars. And then it's it's six days, but it's split into two and two and one and one. So it's more spread out in time because yeah, people in the Netherlands don't have to travel that far. And currently I'm creating a group and, and 
well, seeing if we can plan some dates because the dates are not set yet. Um, and I'm giving other types of workshops. And I can do that also in, uh, in your country if you want. Intuitive marketing, intuitive leadership, business intuition, intuitive networking. So if you think, oh, I want to do something with intuition and businesses, let me know if you have any ideas. All right, let me see. I think that was it for me. Um, well, I, I, let's have a look at the chat because I think that uh, Lu Lucia said something, jumping energy, standing on constellations, want to help me and client, client open for constellations, taking a little step on the side away from me. Yeah, interesting. You see how much information is in just the movement, in the sensation, there's so much information. So that's what I also think it's very interesting. We did this for like 10 minutes or 15 minutes and we got already so much information. Doreen says, I did it with a specific customer. I felt a fear and a little trembling by myself. Yeah, so that's also good. Sometimes it's, it's, it's ooh, there's fear. And it's good to realize that there is fear because if you're working with the customer, this will be in the, yeah, what I call undercurrent. There will be this fear and it's good for yourself to realize that it's there. And if you do a constellation longer and, and maybe with a facilitator, then you can look at the fear and see what, how you can transform the fear or, ha or the feel can, fear, how the fear can help you. So there are different ways of, um, of working with this. But for this constellation was just pure ex um, exploring. If there are any other questions, I'll stay online for a little while. Um, just let me know. And thank you for watching live or maybe later. So uh, if you have questions, let me know. Send me an email and I'm ready to do a Skype call or whatever to talk more about it or uh, share. If you want to share ideas with me, I'm, I like being flexible and fluid and go with the flow. So um, feel free to contact me. Have a nice evening and talk to you later.